Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be sharing my top 10 one and done eyeshadows with you. A few weeks ago, I got a comment asking if I could just share my favorite quick, easy, one and done, I need to spend like one or two minutes on my eyes products and I figured we would do that today. I love a good one and done easy eyeshadow. That's what I wear most days. So I'm going to be sharing my top 10 favorites with you. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe, stick around, and let's get into it. All right, before we get into it, I did just want to say these shadows obviously are going to work well for my skin and my skin tone. Different eyeshadows are going to look different on everyone, obviously, depending on your skin tone. So I will try to mention other shades in these formulas if I do know of them that are a little bit deeper or a little bit lighter than what I'm going to share. But just know these work for my skin tone. They're very neutral. A lot of them will look similar. If you know me, you know I love a good neutral eyeshadow. So yes, a lot of these do look very similar in terms of the shade. But I figured I would share my very favorites and the ones I use the most. This was a little bit difficult for me because in the last year I've gotten very into single shadows. So I have a lot of them. It was kind of hard to narrow them down. But let's get started with shadow number one. And it's going to be this from Armani. This is the Armani Eye Tint. Now, these come in matte shades and more metallic, sparkly shades. I have a few of each. These were sent to me in PR a long time ago, like probably over a year ago now. And I don't use the sparkly ones as much. I definitely prefer the matte shades in this formula. But this one, I... I've almost used this shadow up. I am very close to being out of this shadow. You can kind of see through the packaging there. This is just a hair darker than my skin tone. So as you'll see in the demo, it doesn't show up a ton, but it gives me just enough. If I want to do something really easy, look like I'm not wearing anything, but just give the slightest bit of definition to my eyes, this is one of the ones I use the most. It has a doe foot applicator, which I really like. And this is a very, very easy formula to blend. As you'll see, I mean, it's effortless. It's not difficult at all. They're not overly pigmented. So you don't really have to worry about overdoing it. This one I would say is kind of a neutral beige color that's just, like I said, a hair darker than my skin tone. So I love this one. I use this one on its own all the time. I do also often pair it with this one. I don't think I even said what shade this is. This is shade 18, 18M. And I often pair it with this one, which is 22M, which as you'll see is just I don't know, two shades darker, maybe three shades darker. And I will, and I do this in the demo as well. Sometimes I will add this shade on the outer corner, kind of blend it up into this 18 shade. And I get two very easy, quick, all matte, everyday eyeshadows blended together. They're perfect, very natural looking, not super pigmented, as I said. So if I'm going for ultra, ultra natural, these are ones I reach for all the time. Number two is this one from Chantecaille. This is the Mermaid Eye Colors, I believe is what they're called. And this one is the shade Sylvie. I think this is their best seller, I'm pretty sure. It's a very, I would say, neutral bronze color. Maybe leans slightly warm, but it's not super, super warm. This is such an interesting formula. I can't ever really think of how to describe it other than it's it's a powder, but it's an extremely velvety powder when you blend it out. Like this is the shade here. So that is Sylvie. And it is matte, and they describe it online as a matte, but if you look really closely, it has just the slightest bit of a sheen to it. It's not a flat matte. 
has just a little bit of something. But overall, I would say it's a matte formula and it's velvety. It is very, very velvety. I've never used anything like this formula before. It's very easy to apply. I just use a brush. Today, for almost all of these, I use the Sigma E25 brush. It's just a nice synthetic blending brush and it works great. This is a bit deeper than the Armani tints, so this looks a little bit more smoky on my skin tone because I do have a light skin tone, obviously, but it's a little bit more than the Armani colors. So as you like really blend it out on your hand, you can really sheer this one out. Like that's it after I really kind of went over it with my finger. So you can build this one up and get more intensity or you can really blend and blend and blend and shear it out, which is really nice. Sometimes depending on the day, I'll want it lighter or darker and you do get that versatility with this formula. They do have other colors as well. This is the only one that I've ever tried. So it's the only one that I can speak to, but it's a beautiful, very long lasting eyeshadow that I love. Number three is actually newer to my collection. This is actually the newest one of everything I'm going to mention today. But this was instant love at first use. So this had to be in. This is the Dior Mono Color Single Shadow in 658 Beige Mitza. I waited way too long to try this. So many people have been telling me for years I needed this shadow. I finally got it and I absolutely see what all the hype is about. It is such a beautiful metallic shadow. It's not super glittery or anything. It's a very fine metallic, but it is beautiful. This color, I would describe it as a bronzy taupe. To me, this one is a little bit cooler in tone than like the Sylvie shade, for example. This one has just a little bit of that almost silvery quality to it. So I do think this leans slightly more cool toned, at least on, on my skin tone. But it is so beautiful. In the demo, I did use the little applicator that comes in here. You do get this little baby Dior applicator. And actually, the first time I used this in a video, actually, I did not use the applicator. I used my finger. And I did that in the demo here. So you'll see I did one eye with my finger, one eye with the applicator. The applicator does apply it more intensely. So it looks even deeper with the applicator. So that's another thing I really like about this. Similar to the Chantecaille shadow is depending on how you apply it, you can get more or less intensity. So the applicator has that little foam tip on it so it really packs the color on so you get a lot of intensity. If you use your finger you still get intensity but you can shear it out a bit or you can even just use a brush and get less product and less payoff. So depending on how light or dark you're wanting it you do have that flexibility with this shade in particular. Highly, highly recommend this formula for anyone. Number four is actually a more affordable option and I have to credit Jessica Braun for this one because she's the reason I purchased this. I saw her, she's mentioned this in tons of videos, but this is such a hidden gem from Maybelline. It's their single, or it's their expert wear single shadow in the shade Nude Glow. So it looks like this. These are very old school. These have been around a long, long time. But this shade, if you like a metallic, slight metallic, I should say, one and done neutral brown. This is so pretty. This is so pretty. It honestly kind of reminds me of the Dior beige Misa, but the colors are different. So I will swatch them next to each other here so you can see. I love them both. I think the Dior, as you'll see in the swatch here, is a little bit cooler, a little more of a taupe, like I said earlier. And the Maybelline one leans a little bit warmer, almost a little bit of a rose gold shade. So this is beige Misa, and this is a Maybelline nude glow. So they aren't they aren't that similar in color, but they the formula is honestly pretty similar. The finish, as you can see, 
very, very similar. I, I do think the Maybelline, the formula feels a little bit thinner. There's not as much weight to it, if that makes sense. The Dior formula feels a little bit thicker just going on. I don't know if that makes sense, but it, that's just what comes to my mind. But these are beautiful shadows. If you like something more, it almost has a little bit of a pinky tone to it. Nude Glow is beautiful if you like something a little bit more neutral, leaning, cool tone, more taupey, I would do beige Mitza here, but they are both beautiful. Both, if you like a one and done, slight metallic shadow, love them both. This Maybelline one also comes with the little applicator. I did also want to mention about this one. This shade can be a little bit hard to find. I think I ended up ordering mine on Amazon, I want to say. But this shade in particular from Maybelline, I don't know why it can be kind of tricky. So I'll find it and link it for you below. But this is such a beautiful shadow from the drugstore, Hidden Gem. Number five is from Victoria Beckham and it's the Lid Luster in the shade Honey. So I actually tried these a while ago and I initially purchased the shade Chiffon. I don't love Chiffon as much. There's not enough impact and color for me with that shade, but Honey, Honey is a different story. I love Honey. This one, I will say, has more noticeable glitter reflex in it. So you can see little flecks of shimmer with this one. So if you don't like that, you probably wouldn't like this. This is not as fine and metallic as the previous two. This one's more glittery looking, but this color is such a pretty gold, but it almost has a little bit of a khaki hue to it. It can look a little bit green, which I think is why I like it. I love a good khaki or army green shadow. But this on its own, so beautiful as you'll see in the demo. It's very, very sparkly. So you have to like that and want that kind of look. Honestly, I will typically pair this with something underneath it, like something we'll get to in a minute. I will use something matte all over my eye and then tap a little bit of this on top. But this is also beautiful just on its own. I love it. It works the best with your finger. I learned that the hard way. When I first started using these, I was trying to use a brush. They don't work as well with a brush. You have to really get in there with your finger to get the payoff on your eyes. But this one is beautiful. There are so many pretty shades in this. I've only tried Honey and Chiffon, but there are so many pretty shades in this one depending on your skin tone and what you're looking for. But Honey for me, if I want just a really shimmery, golden khaki on my eyes, I love this one from Victoria Beckham. All right, let's move into a few eyeshadow sticks. I believe we're up to number six now. So we'll start with another Victoria Beckham product and it's the Eyewear Longwear Shadow Stick in the shade Trench. Now, first thing I wanna say about this is I have only tried this shade. I have heard some of the other shades people aren't as crazy about, the formula. I've only tried Trench, so I don't know about the other shades, but there are other shades that look beautiful. I just haven't personally tried them. But Trench is very similar to the Armani Eye Tint in the shade 18. It's not a lot deeper than my skin tone at all, as you'll see in this swatch, but it gives just the slightest bit of color. So that is the shade Trench. And you can see when you blend it out, it, there's not much there. Just barely, barely there. You can obviously add more and build it up just a little bit. But this shade for me is very no makeup makeup. So that's kind of what I use this color for. This or the Armani Eye Tint in the shade 18. This is the product I was referring to earlier that I like to pair with the Lid Luster. So I'll put this all over and then take the Lid Luster and Honey and just tap a little bit of it on top if I want the shimmer. If I don't, then I'll just use this on its own. But I love this. It's very long lasting. I will say you do have to work to blend this one out pretty quickly. They do kind of set, or this one does set down pretty quick. So I would do one eye at a time and blend before you go on to the other eye. 
but once these set down, they stay. And I love the shade personally. It's very neutral. I love it. I highly recommend this shade if you're around my skin tone from Victoria Beckham. Something else I did wanna point out, I should have mentioned this in the intro, is I did not apply any eye base with any of these shadows. So these are all on my bare eyelids. So nothing is underneath. This is just only this product and that's it. I forgot I did mention that in the very beginning, but number seven is another shadow stick from Bobbi Brown. This is the Longwear Shadow Stick in the shade Golden Bronze. Now, I have several Bobbi Brown shadow sticks, but Golden Bronze, if I had to pick one, has to be my favorite. I love this color. It is such a beautiful bronze, but again, it almost has a little bit of like a green hue to it depending on if you pair it with something that's green it will look more green this on my skin tone is a little bit more smoky so it's a little bit deeper than some of the more natural ones that we talked about this one is probably most similar i would say to beige mitza from dior but this one's a little bit warmer beige mitza is more taupe a little bit cooler in tone but i love the shade by itself. This is also beautiful as liner. So if you use another shade that's matte all over and then you want a little bit of definition at your lash line, I love to take this just kind of on the outer half of my eye and smudge it out. It's beautiful that way, but it's also beautiful just on its own. It's a lot of pigment, I will say. So if you don't want it to be super smoky and you have a more fair or light skin tone, I would apply maybe a little bit less of this than you think you need and you can always add more because it does give quite a bit of color pretty quickly. And again, with this, sh this formula from Bobbi Brown, these are extremely long lasting. When they set down on your eyes, they're not going anywhere. They will stay. Whether I use a primer underneath or not, these are very, very, very long wearing. Number eight is the final shadow stick. And it's actually this one from Rare Beauty. This is the, I always forget the name of these, all of the above weightless eyeshadow stick in the shade Contentment. I actually have three of these, but Contentment is the one that I use the most by far. I'm gonna swatch this one next to Golden Bronze as well from Bobbi Brown. So you can see this one is more of a, I would say a rosy taupe, rosy bronze, as you'll see in the swatches. They're kind of hard to explain, but this is Rare Beauty here in Contentment, Bobbi Brown Golden Bronze, and Victoria Beckham in Trench. So this one is matte. These two are metallic, but you can see this one is a little bit more, I would say like a rosy tone, Whereas this one is more golden, khaki toned from Bobbi Brown, but I love them. Contentment is such a good, another metallic one and done. And I love this formula in particular from Rare Beauty because they are very creamy, very, very creamy. So you can really blend and stretch this formula, but like the Bobbi Brown and like the Victoria Beckham, they do last and they do set down. You have a little bit more playtime with this formula, in my opinion, than the other two, but I love it. This is so gorgeous. If you're just looking for a metallic, neutral, you like a little bit of a rosier tone, I love the shade Contentment from Rare Beauty. I also love the shade Adventure. Adventure is darker and it's more of a true, I would say like a chocolate bronze. It's it's dark for my skin tone, but if you have a medium or even medium deep skin tone, the Adventure shade, really, 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 really pretty. But for one and done, this is the shade that I use the most of them. All right, number nine and 10 are actually what I have on my eyes right now. So we'll start with number nine, which is this one from e.l.f. This is the No Budge Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Sand Dune. Now, this is a fantastic formula, fantastic formula from e.l.f. And I think these are like $6. I love this shade. It's a beautiful, 
I would say brownie taupe. Not super cool toned, but it definitely has a little bit of a coolness to it. This is super pigmented though, so you have to be very light-handed with this one. If you go in with a lot of this, it can be a lot very, very quickly. In fact, I kind of did that today and I had to backtrack and blend it out a little bit. But this is a gorgeous formula from e.l.f. I love this color. I just wish it came in more shades. I think it only comes in two neutral shades. This one, and then there's a deeper brown. I'm not sure what it's called, but there's a deeper brown. And then the others are bright colors, like blue and yellow. I think there's a pink, maybe. I wish so badly they would come out with more colors of these because this formula is impeccable. It's called No Budge, and they really do. They don't budge. It will not budge. Once it sets down, it's there. It's not going anywhere. I love this shadow so much. I just wish they would come out with more shades. I personally like to dip my brush in with this one and then kind of tap it off on the back of my hand because it is so pigmented. If you go in with a lot right away, it might be too much if you're looking to keep it a little bit lighter in color. But that's also a good thing. If you have a deeper skin tone, you can actually get a good bit of color from this shade. So I love this one in Sand Dune. So, so good. You just have to be a little bit more careful with it. But definitely a good drugstore one and done shadow. So I have this on all over my eyes today in Sand Dune. And then number 10, you may be able to tell by looking at my eyes. Number 10 has to go to of course, the Moon Dust Shadow from Urban Decay in Space Cowboy. I know this is such a cult favorite for so many people and for good reason. This is a true topper. So you could absolutely wear this on its own. I don't typically wear it on its own. I love to top any of these shades, any of these shadows that are more matte with this. And that's what I did today. I did sand dune all over and then I took my finger and tapped this on my lids and I mean, look at it. If you want that wet lid look that really shines and sparkles in the light, look no further. They do come in other shades. This is the one I use the most. In addition to Wild Dipper. Wild Dipper is a newer shade and it's a little bit warmer. It has a little bit more gold in it. This one is actually pretty cool toned. It has like blue and almost silver reflex in it. I do like Wild Dipper as well, depending on if I want something warmer or cooler. But I mean, this, this has to be the best wet eyeshadow out there on the market. It is gorgeous. It is, it is glitter though. So it, it's going to look like glitter flex on your eye. So you have to want or like that look, but I love it personally. I think it's gorgeous. So this with Sand Dune is what I have on my eyes today and I love it. I did want to quickly just share the brushes that I use with these when I do use a brush. I pretty much reach for the same ones over and over. I either use this one from Sigma. This is the E25 blending brush. It's kind of a flat blending brush as you'll see here. So you can do a lot with this. You can blend or you can really pack on a shadow because it does have more of a flat shape to it. In my opinion, synthetic brushes like this work the best with shadows like this, cream shadows or liquid shadows. That's my personal preference, but I either use the E25 from Sigma or the MAC. I couldn't find my MAC 217. So as you'll see, these are very, very similar. The MAC, I think, is just a little bit larger than the Sigma brush, but you can see the shape is very, very similar. I typically just use whichever one is closest to me, but this is a great shape for shadow in general, like I said, because you can really pack it on if you want, but it does have this fluffy edge to it here, so you can blend it and buff it out as well. So I love both of these. And those are my top 10 one and done neutral eyeshadows. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I've actually been asked to do this a few different times. And honestly, if I'm being real, these are the shadows that I reach for on a daily basis, more so than eyeshadow palettes. 
I don't know, in the last year or so, I've definitely gotten more into single shadows and trying to find the best ones. I don't know, I'm much more likely these days just for every day, unless I'm filming and I want to use a certain palette. I, I often reach for my singles more than my palettes right now. So I hope you enjoyed. I will have everything listed and linked for you in the description box. I will also try to link the shadows in the YouTube shopping feature that you've probably seen on a lot of videos now, but it should be in the bottom left corner and the shadows should pop up as the video goes on. You can also click there if you're curious about anything. I do use affiliate links that support my channel when you use them. Thank you so much. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and make sure you're following me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. And I will see you again very soon for another video. Remember, simply be you. Bye.